morning. Good morning. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're doing here today? Yes. Actually, right across the road was the original George Hansen's Tavern. And that was the seat of government for Queen Anne's County because there was smallpox in Queenstown. And we were called not Centerville, we were called Chester Mill at the time, this little area. So the courthouse could not be used in Queenstown. And we did not have our Queen Anne's County Courthouse that we have here. So that is why the marchers, when they were sent to go to the courthouse in Northampton, had to come here and march from here. Oh, thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about why you're marching? We are celebrating and commemorating the fact that uh, 240 years ago, on this very date, um, 80 men started out from here, 79 finished at the courthouse at Northampton in Virginia. And it was deliberately to protect from Lord Dunmore coming up the Chesapeake Bay. Okay, great. Where are you guys going to end your march? Um, the town, just like we're now Centerville, there was no town at the time of the courthouse in Northampton, Virginia. So it's now Eastville. So we're Centerville and we're going east and we're going to Eastville. I guess let the insanity begin. Um, 144 miles in six days, which I found out this morning, Mary Margaret kind of twisted the story. They actually left today and got there on Valentine's Day, which would have given us an extra six days to walk, but <laughs> we're going to do double time apparently. So I'm okay. um, looking forward to it. Uh, very proud to represent Queen Anne's County in this, in this march. Um, I think it's important that we will recognize history and we commemorate it when we can. I mean, this is going to be the 240th anniversary of our Declaration of Independence, which we all get up and have the ability to do what we do every day because of that. So I, I feel very proud to do this. Okay, thanks. Hi, I'm uh, Bobby Hunt. I'm representing Corsica Technologies. Uh, we're a veteran-owned company, and uh, you know, this is a real big honor to be a part of this, and I'm really excited. My name's uh, Mike Kessler, Corsica Technologies as well. As I said, uh, our owner of our company is a former Marine, and he asked us to do this for in honor of the company, so I couldn't say no. My name is Chris Weitzel. I ref represent Ken Island Running Group. You know, 240 years ago, today they left. A lot of men didn't have the shoes, and, you know, we're, we're dressed for the weather. They, they were not, and they still made it, so I figure, you know, what the heck, we can do it. If they can do it, we can do it. Um, well, first of all, let me just say, I deliberately wanted somebody from Kent Island because so many of the Queen Anne's County Minutemen, and they weren't militia, they were Minutemen at that point. A couple months later, Congress shut down the Minutemen, but I wanted one representative at least from Kent Island, and Chris is it, so. Um, but we have Secretary Owings, who's the Secretary of Veterans Affairs. His um, representative is um, Mr. Villanueva, and I'd like you to talk with him for a few moments. Well, why don't I just launch yeah. right into okay. what I yeah, have please. here. Okay. Well, yes. here good, well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome. I, I'm glad that the rain held up for us. Um, uh, thank you, Mary, for inviting me uh, for, this, uh, for this great event. I bring you greetings from the governor of the uh, state of Maryland, the Honorable uh, Larry Hogan, and the Secretary of Veterans Affairs, the Honorable George Owens, who is very sorry that he can't be here this morning, uh, but there is the state of state address this morning in Annapolis, and that's his presence is required there. Uh, I must also uh, bring to you greetings from uh, Major General Linda L. Singh, my boss, uh, who is the uh, 29th Adjutant General for the state of Maryland. And I must say that it's an honor to mention her in this context, in that uh, one of the men who made that march uh, back in 1776 was Samuel Turbite Wright, 
uh, who became the second adjutant general for the state of Maryland under Governor Wright in 1806. Now, General Wright's reorganization of the Maryland militia after it had been closed down was the, uh, the thing that really helped bring about the militia into a strong uh, organization uh, before the War of 1812. Um, so he was really a sustaining factor in that um, reorganization. Now, 240 years ago, the, um, the Queen Anne County Minutemen marched out from here down, um, down the peninsula to Northampton County to defend the courthouse against the British Lord Dunmore, the last British governor of Maryland. Commissioners Wilson, Kessler, and uh, Whitesaw, Hunt, and Goodwin, good luck on, the, on your trip, Godspeed. Um, you know, back then, um, they, they marched in the snow. Now, we've got some snow today, uh, so that's part, you know, uh, the good recreation. <laughs> But they march, a lot of those march without shoes. And uh, we got to draw the line somewhere. We draw the line somewhere. <laughs> okay. So we're not going to be super hardcore, but we are going to be hardcore. Um, now, afterwards this morning, um, I'm heading up to Pikesville, Maryland to uh, sound some more bugle calls and at the commemoration for the 75th anniversary of the call up of the 29th Division into World War II. It's very interesting that these two uh, ceremonies happen on the same day. Now, as we know that the 29th Division, which was made up of Maryland units, uh, eventually were those uh, soldiers who landed in Normandy on D-Day. Um, now, both of these ceremonies honor the Maryland citizen soldiers who gave up everything to serve our state and nation in time of war. And I'm quite honored to be both a part of these uh, ceremonies. I'm quite honored to be part of the National Guard that is descended from these brave Minutemen and uh, militia citizen soldiers. Also, I should mention uh, another group that I'm, uh, I, I, I'm a member of, and that's the Maryland Defense Force. A lot of folks have never heard of the Maryland Defense Force, but the Maryland Defense Force is a group of 400 uniformed volunteers in the state of Maryland who serve our state, just like the uh, militia and the Minutemen did back way back when. They were actually formed in 1917 uh, when the call up of the National Guard uh, for World War I took place. Uh, these men and women, uh, doctors and lawyers and engineers, chaplains, all help support our National Guard today in their deployments. Also, another thing to point out, uh, very interestingly, is in 1776, another group of uh, citizen soldiers, the 1st Maryland Regiment, left from Maryland and went to New York. After being formed here in Maryland, they went to New York in August of 1776 uh, and took uh, to join up with the Continental Army. Of course, George Washington was fighting off the British. They were involved in the Battle of uh, Long Island. And what happened and, uh, is, is that the, the American Army got beat up pretty bad by the British. These 400 volunteers from Maryland, the Maryland 400 as they became known, were the units that held back the British advance so that the uh, Continental Army could make its, 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 its escape. Um, uh, into New York. So, you know, Maryland has contributed Mar uh, citizen soldiers to the cause. Um, these, uh, of course, these are colonial Minutemen, the Maryland Defense Force, the Maryland National Guard, they make up all great, uh, like I said before, citizen soldiers, and it's so important that we honor them. So in a way, what you're doing is honoring those uh, citizen soldiers by doing what you're going to uh, do uh, over the next week or so. Unfortunately, we were not able to get a proclamation set up in, in time. I'm going to do the next best thing. I brought along with me some coins, challenge coins. Of course, every military organization has got to have challenge coins. and. Since I'm the director of the Maryland National Guard, it would be awesome if you guys carried these coins from Maryland and into Virginia.
Thank you so much. Once again, um, I'm honored to be here and uh, we wish you good luck and Godspeed and uh, hold off those British for us, okay? <laughs>want to flash back to the year 1776, February. Obviously, it's very cold. Uh, our great nation, we weren't even considered to be a full nation as of yet. Little town of Centerville, uh, which in 2016 is 222 years old, was still 18 years from being born. Uh, this area was known as Chester Mill. Uh, included George Hansen's Tavern, as Mary Margaret had said earlier, uh, in the location, I think, right at where we, stu where we stand today. The Episcopal Church, St. Paul's Parish, was right here, near here right as well. Right down there where that tall tree stands up, that's where the Episcopal, the first Episcopal Church was. Okay, and the, Ch the original Chester Mill uh, is down at the intersection of it's where it's 213 where it uh, and, and the mill stream. After the war, uh, when all is said and done, the commanding officer, uh, Captain James Kent, actually settled in what would be known as Centerville. And all great journeys that are conceived in a tavern, I wanted to uh, offer the, tra uh, the, the, the travelers a virtual toast. Good luck, Godspeed, as uh, was said earlier, and here's to your safe return. So thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you.